recording. Uh, hello everyone, uh, welcome to the standardized MEDRA queries webinar today. Uh, my name is Dr. Anamika Dutt and I uh, work as a medical officer at Dramedra MSSO and responsible uh, for the local support in India. I also have my colleague, uh, Ms. Yuni Do, who has uh, joined us from uh, Korea. And uh, both of us together are happy to host uh, this webinar today for you. All right, uh, something to uh, about Medra before we uh, proceed. Uh, so Medra came into existence in 1990s and uh, Medra is owned by the ICH. Now, because it's a living and breathing terminology uh, that would require maintenance, uh, so ICH created uh, the Medra Maintenance and Support Organization uh, known as the MSSO. And it is under the oversight of this ICH Medra Management Committee uh, that the key function of MSSO is to maintain uh, distribute and support MEDRA on behalf of the MEDRA users. Uh, the ICH MEDRA Management Committee is composed of the ICH parties, the Medicine and Healthcare uh, Products Regulatory Agency, which is uh, the MHRA of the UK, the Health Canada and WHO, who participates as an observer. Uh, this slide is a very uh, busy slide, but uh, this is basically a copyright notice. So I quickly allow you a few seconds to go over it. And I just quickly, I can also summarize it uh, very br briefly for you. Uh, so the material which uh, I'm going to be presenting to you today is protected by copyright and uh, ICH owns a copy of uh, this uh, material and uh, you cannot reproduce the logos uh, medra and ich logos but other than this if you would like to use uh, any information uh, that is presented today in any of your public uh, presentation then you can feel free to do so but uh, you need to acknowledge that ich owns a copy uh, and if you make any modifications then at that stage uh, or any translations so at that stage, you cannot claim that ICH endorses any of the changes that you have made to the original presentation. And it is possible that uh, this presentation uh, contains uh, contents which have been supplied by third parties. In that case, the copyright permission vest with this third party who provided us that uh, material. OK, um, so uh, quickly, let's look at the course overview. So. Uh, we will uh, review the Medra data retrieval and presentation points to consider document also popularly abbreviated as MTS, uh, uh, sorry, DRPPTC. Uh, we would also discuss the features of SMQs, uh, which includes the background uh, and data characteristics. Also talk about the impact of Medra versioning on the SMQs. And of course, uh, discuss a few benefits and limitations of SMQs. Um, I would also demonstrate uh, the SMQ analysis tool, which are embedded in the Medra browsers. And we'll also talk about applications of SMQs and uh, discuss two clinical scenarios uh, for the use of SMQs. And also uh, touch base on the customized search. And finally, we conclude with uh, the question and answer session. Uh, so just uh, quickly to you know remind you like if you have any questions you may uh, use the control panel and the question or chat box there to submit your questions but uh, this uh, we are not able to answer any questions about coding of individual verbatims which is not in the scope of this webinar today so please refrain from asking uh, those questions uh, quickly some abbreviations that uh, we would be using in this presentation or have used before. Uh, so uh, that's the, uh, you know, quick uh, slide on the abbreviations. And now uh, let's talk about the polling system today. So we would use the poll everywhere to make this class a bit more interactive. Uh, so the easiest way to join the poll is uh, to scan the QR code, uh, which is on your extreme right. Uh, my colleague, Uni, uh, 
may have posted the uh, entire link uh, for polling or she would uh, post it very shortly so uh, you can join the poll even uh, if you're using your android systems or uh, your uh, computer systems you can join the poll directly by uh, typing in uh, poll ev.com backslash anamika data 561 or if you're using uh, you know you can just type in also poll ev.com and then uh, in that case you will be asked to enter uh, the username so where you need to enter my name anamika data 561 to join the poll and once uh, uh, you can also uh, you know click on the skip to uh, skip uh, your uh, identity and keep your votes anonymous uh, hopefully you are able to take the screenshot of the QR code and I would launch the poll and uh, whenever I launch a poll uh, you know you you will see that uh, just uh, uh, just on the upper uh, section of the poll uh, it mentions respond at poll ev uh, dot com so uh, this is an image poll so you just need to click on uh, the poll so what's your weather like today uh, for me it's quite sunny here uh, though and very hot rather though we have uh, uh, winter season here but it's not really like winter in Mumbai I've joined from Mumbai today okay looks like uh, some of you have already I'm sorry uh, yeah a lot of you are, are telling me that it's sunny there and then uh, this cold cloudy okay rainy also that's good to know partly cloudy seems like uh, you've been able to uh, set up the poll today all right so your experience with metra now uh, so if less than six months one to two years uh, three to five six to ten or more than ten I see we have some diverse experience today we do have a lot of you who are in between one to two years and then uh, quite a few of you between three to five and then between six to ten and do we do have people who are fairly new with less than six months of experience with Medra so welcome all and good to know uh, your uh, background experience with Medra okay how frequently do you use SMQs at your organization mm -hmm. I see uh, again uh, a lot of you are using it daily on your day-to-day uh, -day basis and then there are 31% of you using it occasionally and 38% uh, are using on a daily basis uh, that's good and uh, yeah 23% of you are uh, telling me that you don't use SMQs at all and then some of you uh, do not know about SMQs don't worry we would uh, introduce you today you get to know more about as uh, SMQs as we proceed further today okay uh, so have you attended the data analysis and query building uh, webinar okay uh, lot of you have seems like a lot of yes is coming in that's good to know that uh, I see only uh, okay one response is no but most of you uh, seem to have attended it uh, that's a good beginning point um, because uh, you know you have some idea about how to build a query and uh, so that's good to know that uh, a lot of you have attended okay the next poll uh, so the most hilarious term that you remember was reported for coding a uh, real-time coding mm, I remember quite a few of them like um, uh, those were mainly with the legacy coding data that I saw like uh, there was a verbatim which was reported normally normal after drinking coffee and uh, we were like oh really uh, is that really a report but yeah uh, unfortunately it was don't see any responses coming in today <laughs> no adverse events okay uh, 
vomiting due to Christmas market uh, visit hypertension due to prime oh gosh okay my pet took away my pill back yeah we can uh, pets can sometimes be really annoying at times <laughs> thanks for sharing that complain from the country where the drug was not distributed it was serious related okay that's great uh, thank you uh, all for sharing the verbatims neg feedback on drugs with uh, expletives okay thank you so let's uh, uh, first look at the data uh, retrieval and presentation points to consider document uh, before that i would just love to launch another poll uh, so where do you think you will find uh, uh, the points to consider documents on the metra website i see some polls coming in now you may want to indicate the most uh, you know uh, relevant uh, place we drop your pin there so you see uh, various answers like uh, some uh, votes for or uh, under about matter organization a lot of you telling me self service and training curriculum uh, i see a lot of cluster under support documentation page which is uh, certainly the right answer and thank you for uh, attempting that poll uh, so uh, on the medra website you have this how to use under this uh, there is this uh, support documentation uh, page so under the su support documentation page you have this blue kisok uh, which tells you about the points to consider document and best practices so when you click on that you have all the uh, points to consider and best practices document uh, the most uh, recent version uploaded here uh, so here are the terms to cons consider uh, document for term selection and you have uh, the data retrieval and presentation points to consider here uh, so today we will be talking about this document a lot so we'll refer to this uh, during our presentation today so uh, it is available to you know kind of uh, in the pdf uh, word and html format so you may want to uh, freely uh, it's actually a free resource to everyone so you may want to uh, read the document uh, from our website okay so uh, the data retrieval uh, presentation points to docu uh, consider document is an ich endorsed guide for metra users and this is the first page of the uh, drp ptc or the data retrieval uh, points to consider document uh, that's based on the latest version is uh, based on version 25.0 and this document is updated uh, annually in step with the march uh, release of metra and uh, it is a companion document to metra uh, the principles uh, which are discussed in this document will be very effective if you use uh, when uh, this document is used in conjunction with uh, the principles described in the term selection points to consider document which is used for uh, data coding uh, also this document provides uh, data retrieval and presentation options for uh, industry and also for regulatory purposes uh, although metra includes some data retrieval tools but this document uh, addresses the uh, data retrieval in the broader context and uh, the objective is to demonstrate how data retrieval options uh, impact uh, the accuracy and consistency of the data output so as uh, you need to be consistent with coding uh, also it uh, there needs to be consistency in the way uh, the output is uh, uh, after coding how the outputs are dis uh, kind of displayed uh, so organizations are uh, encouraged uh, to document their own data retrieval and presentation on output strategies methods quality assurance procedures in your organization specific guidelines and that should be uh, consistent with what is discussed in the data retrieval pre presentation points to consider document 
uh, a little more about this document. So it was developed by uh, the working group of the ICH Medra Management Committee and um, it is updated annually in step with the March release and available on uh, the Medra and the GMO website in English, uh, Japanese, Chinese, Korean, Spanish and now in Russian too. Uh, you have this condensed or the shorter version which is available for, for all other languages, uh, metro languages which do not have the full uh, version. Uh, so the document is available in Word, PDF and HTML. The Word document is very helpful because it comes as a red line document referring the previous changes. Now on your screen you see that uh, various points that are discussed in this document. Uh, for example, uh, the section two of this document uh, that addresses general principles uh, like the quality of source data or not to alter Medra or even uh, talks about versioning and organization specific data characteristics. The section three of this document uh, discusses general uh, queries and retrieval strategies and uh, the section four discusses the uh, standardized Medra queries and this the fifth section uh, to, uh, talks about uh, customized searches in this uh, document. Uh, so uh, a few things about uh, Medra versioning. So Medra is updated uh, twice a year in March and in September. The March release or the X.0 release has simple changes uh, which uh, as well as complex changes which means uh, the changes at all levels of the hierarchy are available there. Uh, whereas the X.1 release is a September release uh, that only has uh, simple uh, changes which is like LLT and uh, PT level changes only. So we have a few resources like the what's new document, the Medra version report and the Medra version analysis tool uh, which you could refer uh, to know about the changes between each version of Medra. Also, uh, an important thing that you must note is uh, the Medra version used for data uh, retrieval and presentation uh, should be documented in your uh, uh, data coding guidelines or organ organization specific guidelines and the terms that you are using to construct the query should be in the same version uh, as the data being queried so that uh, you avoid any kind of discrepancies. And uh, this is the uh, Medra version analysis tool. So which uh, we have, uh, uh, it's an online tool uh, for which uh, are provided uh, free of cost to all the uh, Medra users. And uh, you may use this tool to uh, generate, uh, produce an exportable report, uh, uh, like a version report basically when you use the version report uh, generator. So you, you may get, uh, you may produce an exportable report between uh, the changes between two versions like the previous version and uh, the latest version now. Or you could also identify a particular changes to the data that is uh, your uh, basically data. So if you're only interested to know what how, what changes have uh, occurred in your uh, specific data sets then you may use a data impact report after you upload the data in a prescribed format into the tool. Or if you're just looking at you know uh, interest in only few term changes then uh, you may use the search term change function as well to identify changes to only single metra term or a code. Uh, you would need your Medra uh, ID and password obviously to uh, log into the tool and uh, the user interface is available uh, in all languages. You have the ability to run reports on supplemental changes and also on the uh, SO, secondary SOC changes. Uh, so we do have this uh, two part webinar on the use of MBAT tool. Uh, which is under the tools tab of the training material page. So today we are not able to kind of uh, discuss about this one. Uh, it's uh, I can just show you where you would find this uh, uh, training. So on the training material page here, uh, you may go on the tools section and then uh, you have this uh, MVAD demonstration one and two, you have this available in uh, Chinese and English. So we have it for streaming down and download as well. Or you can wish to watch this on YouTube too. So please, uh, if you would like to know how to use the tool, then uh, that would be the best uh, place to go to. Okay, now let's now talk about uh, 
a bit about SMQs. Before that, we can just quickly see if there are any questions uh, submitted uh, so far. Uh, Uni, do we have anything? Um, no questions so far. Okay, thank you, Uni. Uh, so let's now talk about uh, the SMQs. Uh, before this, let me launch a poll. Okay, so why uh, why do you want to query the database? What are your thoughts? Why do you think we should query the database rather? So, for more information to collect, okay. Too many reports in database. More standardized responses, okay. For non-codable verb items, okay. Any more thoughts? So uh, there would be various reasons, right, why you want to qu query uh, the database. Like one of our colleagues told us, like non-codable verbatim. Yeah, you may want to look at how many verbatims were not codable. To retrieve all available information for event of interest, that's correct. Uh, so you would want to look for, uh, you know, uh, you have, you may have adverse event of special interest, which you want to uh, look for uh, clarification of verbatims. Yeah, there are various reasons why you want to query the database. To granulate the specific term if it belongs to a particular SOC. Yeah, if you're looking for, uh, even for signals, you would want to look at like what is uh, happening to your data. Like, do you have, if you are uh, looking at the uh, clinical trial setting, then you would look at uh, a new drug application, then you would not know what kind of adverse events expected after the drug uh, uh, proceeds from, uh, you know, to the phase three trial. So you may want to kind of, you know, monitor the data there. So, yeah. So various reasons why you would want to query, right? So before uh, this, let's understand uh, why uh, or what exactly is a query. So let's first try to understand this. Uh, so query is basically a way of requesting information from database. Now, uh, now comes the next important question. Uh, what do you need exactly for a query? So obviously you will need a source or a uh, where a uh, source where you want to query, right? So in the context of drug development uh, process, uh, it would be your uh, clinical database or your safety database which stores information in forms of coded, inf uh, coded data. Uh, then you also need uh, a search criteria. So uh, based on what are you trying to query? So in this context of drug development process, it would be your uh, medical concepts or events that you want to look uh, for. Uh, so that would be uh, again the you have to input something so that would be list of your LNTs and PTs to identify events of your interest in your database and then finally you have your output which are the cases of interest or exact uh, cases that you would want to retrieve from that by executing that query now this illustration here uh, explains the basic concepts of running a query on the Medra data uh, coded database. Uh, so when uh, you, you see here uh, in the query list or the SMQ list, you have uh, PTs listed and under the PTs you have LLTs, uh, LLT1, LLT uh, and LLTs, right? And in your uh, safety or clinical database, you do have cases which are coded with this LLT1. Uh, so when you execute this query, so wherever there is a match between the LLT1 in your SMQ list and the match within your uh, database uh, with that particular LLT that would be retrieved. So all cases which are coded to LLT1 will be retrieved when you execute this query. Okay, so it's the same process if you're running an SMQ or any kind of customized queries or even the modified Metra queries. Okay, now let's launch a poll and see. Uh, PTs include, that are included in the SMQ may relate to what do you think it could be? There are a few options here. Let's see what your thoughts are. Uh, it's an image uh, quiz, so you might want to indicate uh, whatever you think is correct. 
So I see votes coming for laboratory test results, diagnosis, clinical signs. medical social history, then physical findings, diagnostic imaging, procedure findings, toxicologic issues, specific deaths and sudden deaths. Right. Uh, thank you for uh, your responding. So, well, uh, to, to be honest, like all of them might be included uh, if it is relevant to the topic or the condition of interest that you are trying to explore so that you do not miss out on identifying a case. So uh, you might want to include a, all of them, which is indicated here, depending on what you're looking at. Okay. So let's move on to the next slide. So standardized uh, MEDRA queries or SMQs are uh, groupings of MEDRA terms. Uh, ordinarily, the groupings are done at the preferred term level uh, that relate to a particular uh, or a defined medical condition of interest that you're trying to explore. Now, SMQs are intended uh, to aid uh, identification as well as retrieval of potentially uh, relevant uh, individual case, uh, case safety uh, report. So uh, they help you in kind of identifying uh, a particular uh, cases of interest in your ICSRs as well. So the terms which are included uh, may relate to sign symptoms. It may be diagnosis, syndromes, physical findings, laboratory test data, etc. So all cases which you think might be relevant uh, to a particular topic that you are trying to uh, fetch the uh, results for. Uh, so uh, within the SMQ, the only lowest level terms that are represented are the ones uh, which link to the PTs. Uh, so obviously only PTs are included. So uh, by the structure of MEDRA, all LLTs uh, which are underneath a particular PT will be also included. Okay, now let's do a quick uh, knowledge test. Uh, the first two SMQs that was available to MEDRA users, what do you think is the right answer? So we have some votes for uh, the last option that is ocular infections and malignancy. Okay. Uh, then a few votes of hepatic disorder and uh, medication errors. And then 20% uh, of you uh, have voted for rhabdomyolysis, myopathy and toxicity points and QT prolongation. And then uh, we have 6% of you uh, voting for interstitial lung disease and infective pneumonia. Well, uh, the right answer is uh, rhabdomyolysis, myopathy, SMQ, and toxicity points uh, and uh, QT prolongation. So these SMQs were first available uh, during version 8.0 in uh, released in March 2008. So since then, the SMQs are uh, in production. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, so what topic was put into production uh, in version 25? It's no responses as, as of now. I hope the, you're able to see the poll question. Okay, I see some response coming now. COVID-19, menstrual disorders. Okay, what else? Pericarditis. Uh, partially right uh, when you say pericarditis. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, the SMQ that was added in version 25 was SMQs, uh, non-infectious myocarditis, pericarditis. Yeah, non-infectious myocarditis and pericarditis. So that uh, that was SMQ, which was uh, the latest, you know, SMQ with version 25.0. And that contains uh, 14 narrow and about 20 broad search terms. And the focus is to identify non-infectious myocarditis or uh, pericarditis uh, that could be possibly related to uh, exposure to drugs, vaccines, or biologicals. Uh, it's, it's thought to be of very uh, pretty much good relevance uh, for cardiac adverse events following immunization and also 
uh, with mRNA uh, COVID-19 vaccines. Now this slide uh, quickly uh, shows you some of the examples of uh, uh, the SMQs that are in production. So as of version 25, we have 110 level one SMQs in production. And you see here uh, some topics like anaphylactic reaction, hypersensitivity, uh, uh, medication errors, COVID-19, uh, shock or lack of efficacy and effect. Uh, so all of these are very much relevant uh, in terms of uh, safety and pharmacovigilance activities. Uh, when I say safety, I mean drug safety. So now uh, let's talk about uh, what are the uh, SMQ data characteristics. So uh, first of all, what kind of terms are included? Uh, then we'll talk about the scope, like the narrow scope or uh, broad scope. And uh, some SMQs are pretty uh, straightforward, like uh, they're just straightforward collection of terms and some of them have uh, been designed to accommodate a combination of terms from uh, more than one groups like uh, algorithmic SMQs and some have an hierarchical relationships. Uh, so each SMQs, including its subordinate uh, LLTs and PTs have an assigned uh, uh, status. So we'll talk about them as well and also about the term uh, versioning in SMQ. So we'll talk about each of these in the upcoming uh, slides now. Uh, so first of all, what terms are included? So SMQs are constructed uh, generally at the PT level or the preferred term level uh, that relate to a particular uh, defined uh, medical condition or area of interest. Uh, so the terms that are included are uh, obviously by the hierarchical uh, structure of uh, Metra. So when you include the PT, obviously all LLTs which are subordinate to the particular PT are also included in that uh, SMQ. So those are the only LLT inclusions in the SMQ that you would see. Uh, so SMQs have uh, uh, narrow and broad uh, scope searches. Now these are uh, SMQ. This approach actually accommodates uh, those in instances where a user wants to identify cases that are highly or more likely to present a condition of interest, which is a narrow scope. So uh, when you run a narrow scope, you would get, a, a, you know, um, higher likelihood that uh, of a case to be retrieved, which belong to the particular topic. So uh, that uh, uh, represents uh, specificity. And also we would want to capture those instances where uh, a user wants to uh, seek to identify all possible cases. So uh, in that case, uh, you know, including cases which may be of, you know, no or little uh, interest when closer inspection. So when you do not want any um, of the, uh, you know, any of the topics to kind of, you know, miss your radar. So any reported event to miss your radar in that case, uh, a broad scope, uh, running a broad scope is possible. Uh, it's good because it will yield everything that uh, fetch everything that is reported. So uh, as I mentioned, so narrow scope will give you a specificity virus, broad scope uh, yields uh, sensitivity. Uh, so when you run a broad scope, uh, uh, it would al also yield results for narrow and uh, broad terms both. Uh, one more thing which I would like to state here, not all SMQs uh, you will see have uh, broad scope. So some of them might be just having only narrow scope searches. Okay. Here you see an example of a narrow versus broad scope uh, and this SMQ is uh, lactic acidosis. As you see here, uh, the narrow scope terms, uh, when you look at the browser, uh, you will see they are indicated uh, by a blue lettering PT in front of them. So all the narrow scopes are indicated in blue lettering. So we will see the browser uh, after a while and uh, that time I can show you again. So here you see uh, lactic acidosis and hyperlactosidemia and uh, blood lactic acid increased are on the narrow, sc narrow scope of this uh, SMQ. Uh, so when you run uh, the ones which are indicated in blue, that is the three SMQs that I mentioned now, uh, you would see uh, you have higher chances of a possibility to find uh, exactly a case of lactic acidosis. But uh, if you run the broad search, like for example, acidosis, blood pH increased and decreased, you have these uh, broad scope PTs included. So uh, 
there is a possibility of not missing out an event, but then uh, on a closer inspection, you might uh, see that they are not a case of lactic acidosis. So uh, that is the concept here. Okay, uh, some SMQs uh, may also have algorithmic SMQs, uh, algorithm within them, which is uh, in addition to this narrow and broad scope. So uh, this is a combination of search terms from various categories of a broad search to further refine the identification of cases of interest as compared to the broad search category. So uh, the algorithmic search methodology uh, yields uh, greater sensitivity as compared to the narrow search or greater specificity as compared to broad search. So when you uh, run an algorithm, uh, you uh, you will have, uh, so the broad categories within a few SMQs have been further div divide, divided into, you know, category. Uh, so when you look at the browser, you will see that uh, all the narrow scopes are in the category A and then the broad categories might begin from B and it might go up to uh, any alphabet depending on the number of you know how many broad categories are, are there under them uh, so for example in in case of you know pa uh, pancreas acute pancreatitis smqs uh, you have this uh, narrow scope and the broad scopes uh, are divided into two categories b and c so b is a list of all laboratory values and c is a list of signs and uh, some signs and symptoms so uh, when you run this algorithm, uh, it would fetch data. Like, you know, if you run only A, uh, if you run this algorithm, if you get all A's, means, which means they are definitely cases of acute pancreatitis, but uh, the algorithm also says a case would be like, either you fetch A or you get uh, B and C. If you get a combination of uh, one from category B, which is list of uh, laboratory values and one from uh, category C, then it is possibly a case. So, uh, when you run the algorithm, uh, this is the value you get. So, uh, this is very helpful when you have a large number of uh, cases, when you know that there are a large number of cases and it will be retrieved by the broad search terms. In that case, the algorithm may uh, reduce your need to manually sorting uh, cases of interest. So, uh, that's when uh, the algorithm SM SMQs become very useful and handy. Here you see an example of an algorithmic SMQ, anaphylactic reaction. And uh, this slide shows you some terms that represent in the narrow uh, scope or category A, and uh, which is on your left hand side. And then in under category, uh, broad categories, you have B, C and D here. Like B is the upper airway respiratory symptoms, uh, C the angioedema and articaria, and you have a D which is a cardiovascular hypotension. Or hypotension. Now, in this case, uh, the algorithm says like uh, it's a case. Uh, it, it would be considering a case when uh, you have uh, a term which is uh, between uh, a. So, for example, like if you run an uh, algorithm and you get data of anaphylactic shock, obviously uh, that is a confirmed case. Or uh, you might get uh, you might have if your uh, data yields one from b and one from C or either one from uh, B or C and one from D, then it is a case. Uh, for example, like if you have acute respiratory failure and angioedema, then it, it is a case or you have angioedema and uh, blood pressure diastolic decrease and it is a case. Or if you have uh, blood pressure systolic decrease and asthma, then it is possibly a case. Uh, so not all categories here are displayed is just to show uh, the concept. So. Uh, you do not have all the cases, possibly uh, categories under uh, B, C and D here mentioned. Here is an example uh, of the algorithm in a, you know, uh, that you see in the flowchart form. So for example, you have, uh, we're talking about the anaphylactic reaction SMQ. So uh, when you run this uh, query, you, you fetch an A, yes, in that case, yes, it is a case to review, but it is not a, you know, not within the narrow scope and you find uh, terms which match the category B and you also have a match from category C, then yes, definitely it's a case to review. If uh, if it is not, you have something from C and then D, then of course it is a case. But if you have neither of them, then, then no cases would be identified. Okay. Um, other than the algorithmic uh, 
SMQs. Some uh, SMQs might be series of uh, queries that relate to one another in a hierarchical uh, fashion, a similar uh, relationship as you see uh, with the hierarchical structure of Medra itself. Now, these may consist of uh, one or more subordinate SMQs that could be combined to create a superordinate or a more exclusive SMQs. And in some hierarchical uh, SMQs, uh, there could be no separate uh, narrow or broad categories within that uh, uh, subordinate SMQs or sub SMQs. Now, the hierarchy uh, provides you with a flexibility. So, uh, for example, a user may wish to apply uh, the entire scope of the of, uh, SMQ topic. For example, you, we have this uh, uh, hepatic disorder is a very good uh, example of a hierarchical SMQ. So uh, you, if you uh, want to run the entire uh, scope of this SMQ, then you might run the entire uh, all the PTs. But, uh, but if you only wish to kind of uh, retrieve cases of uh, drug related hepatic disorder comprehensive search then you might want to use that smq or you're only interested in pregnancy related hepatic disorder then you might only choose a particular uh, sub smqs within the hierarchical smqs to uh, look at cases of your interest now here is an example of a hierarchical uh, smq hemopoietic cytopenia uh, so uh, if you run the entire SMQ, you will get all kinds of cytopenias within your database. But if you are only look, uh, you know, want to look at thrombocytopenia, then you would want to only use that uh, sub SMQs. Or if you're looking at erythropenia, then you would only want to use that sub SMQ here uh, under this uh, hierarchical SMQ to retrieve cases of your interest. Okay. Uh, next thing that uh, I'd like to talk about is the status and the uh, within an SMQ of a term within an SMQ. So uh, each SMQ, including its uh, subordinate LLTs and PTs have assigned or assigned a status. Uh, the status can either be active or inactive. Um, an inactive SMQ is the one that is currently maintained uh, by the uh, uh, MSSO. I'm sorry, I, I meant an active SMQ is the one which we are currently maintaining at uh, the MSSO. And an inactive uh, SMQ is the one which is no longer maintained. Um, although it may be included and distributed uh, within the SMQ ASCII files for at least one release uh, for archival. So, for example, uh, we had this adverse uh, pregnancy SMQs that was removed from the ASCII files altogether and they were archived as uh, version 13.1 SMQ in version 14. Uh, also, an SMQ may be. Uh, inactive if it was found not very useful to the users or it becomes uh, outdated or if it was not found to be otherwise you know useful or, or problematic uh, the pts and llts that have been made inactive uh, within an smq remain in that smq and are never deleted these are like when a smq is active uh, so whatever pts are been added uh, remain active there uh, sorry, remain uh, there. So you, when you execute uh, a query, you must must remove all the inactive PTs uh, before you run the SMQ in your data uh, data sets. Okay. Uh, now let's talk about uh, the SMQ versioning. So each SMQ. Uh, each SMQ that relates to a particular uh, specific version of uh, an SMQ. So SMQs are a part of a new Medra release and they are uh, maintained by uh, the JMO and uh, by the MSSO. And they correspond to the terms that are present in that particular version of Medra. So uh, as with uh, each version release, we also maintain the SMQ list to be more uh, updated with the current uh, version that has been released. So the, uh, the SMQ version should always correspond to the Medra version that has been searched. So uh, if you use a particular version to code the data, then you should use the same version to run the query. Otherwise, there would be uh, mismatches uh, and uh, you will see discrepant results. OK, uh, and as with all uh, searches, uh, it is important to kind of document your Medra version and the SMQ version that is used in your organization specific uh, data retrieval presentation guidelines or in your organization specific SOPs, uh, whatever SOPs you are using. 
so some organization may have a separate uh, coding guidelines and separate data uh, retrieval guidelines but some organization may have a uh, you know master so sop so uh, whichever way you are maintaining it should be documented uh, both of your uh, coding as well as principles for searching should be documented okay uh, the meta version of the smq uh, and the coded data being searched should be same because mismatches would produce uh, unexpected results uh, for example uh, if you're using a smq from an older version of medra and you are applying it to the data which is coded with the most recent version of medra then uh, you should expect to see some uh, discrepancy so uh, all the terms which were present in the newer version uh, probably got added into the smq that will not be shown when you run this query now here's an example uh, the pt hormone uh, receptor positive breast cancer uh, this was added to the smq uh, breast uh, malignant uh, tumors in version 23 now if you're using the version 22.1 uh, or earlier of this smq then you will not find this pt uh, because uh, your data uh, if if you're coding with this version 23 and you're querying with 22.1 or older then you will definitely not find this pt uh, which was added to the version 23 so you must ensure that uh, you're using the same version to code as well as to uh, retrieve data now here's a quick quiz for you uh, so uh, you need to spot the lie uh, there are three statements and i'm definitely lying in one of them so you need to catch the lie the smqs cover all medical topics uh, smqs are uh, version by the mso and then they cover all the product specific okay uh so 57% of you are thinking um that the statement uh, telling me that uh, uh, smqs are product specific is a lie and then 13% uh, have indicated uh, smqs are version by mss or being a lie smqs cover all medical topics or safety issues is been voted by 38% so 38% uh, of you are right smqs uh, cover all medical topics well no that is not true the the scope of uh, medical science is vast and uh, smqs cannot cover all medical topics because uh, while developing we need to need it to be you know non product specific so there are a lot of a lot of things that we consider before we uh, you know have a, put an smq in production so it has to be uh, it has to be used uh, a broad concept which can be applied uh, across a lot of uh, therapeutic areas so it cannot be a particularly in a uh, confined therapeutic area and uh, it has to be non product specific as well so uh, so that's why uh, the smqs may not be able to capture cover all medical topics and with even with the smq sometimes you'll have to create your customized query or modified medra queries okay now let's talk about uh, uh, some benefits and limitations uh, so smqs are created to standardize identify uh, fication on retrieval of safety data uh, and they are a joint uh, effort of uh, cioms which is council for uh, international organizations of medical sciences and the ich and that includes both the mso and the jmo and they represent both the industry and the regulatory authorities so smqs have a few benefits like they help in standardize uh, communication of safety information and uh, consistent data retrieval across various users and you may also apply them across uh, multiple therapeutic areas so they are not product specific uh, the search uh, logic is also validated reusable and they are uh, rigorously tested in at least in one uh, industry and one regulated database before they are put into production um and the maintenance is definitely by the mss and the jmo so uh, you as an organization do not have to you know take care of uh, the maintenance part of the smqs which have been uh, released with each medra version however uh, like with every other uh, thing in this world we also have limitations so they do not cover all uh, medical topics or safety issues 
Uh, so you may have to develop uh, some queries uh, or specific to your search uh, based on your product or uh, query of your interest. And they keep evolving even after, uh, you know, on, and further ref refinement, even though they have been put into production or tested and developed. Uh, that this is because uh, with each new version, you will have newer PTs which get added. And uh, so they may potentially get added to a particular SMQ or there could be change requests from the users to make, uh, you know, some existing SMQ uh, PTs within the SMQ uh, non-current or uh, maybe inactive or some LLTs may become non-current that might affect be, you know, uh, mapped under a particular PT. So uh, or even the PTs may be demoted, promoted. So they're not with each uh, uh, maintenance of the dictionary. So there are possibilities that uh, the a particular PT might get affected and that might be under a particular SMQ. So the, uh, those are not ruled out. So the, those are the limitations. Uh, so now I would quickly demonstrate you the SMQ view of the browser. So let's uh, go to the browser. So uh, you may access the browsers either from the tool section here and this is the shortcut like you know you can click on the WBB and it will take you directly to the uh, web based browser or the tool section here and then you must click the browsers and you have the options for web based browser or you can open the Medra mobile browser and even download the desktop browser so you need definitely need your uh, Medra ID and password. So I have this link open here. So you would have to enter your credentials. And click. So today uh, uh, we would not look at the SOC view which uh, is uh, used for uh, operational coding but I will shift the mode here uh, from the SOC view to the SMQ and now I am uh, at the version 25.1 and I will have a look at uh, we can look at the browser so uh, if you look at the browser quickly then uh, what you will notice is the uh, layout just looks the same as with operational coding or the SOC view uh, however, the information that is presented in this view is a little different from what information has been provided uh, with the SOC view of the browser. So when you come into the SMQ view, you will notice that uh, all the 110 level 1 SMQs are reported in uh, alphabetical order and uh, you have uh, an option to search and then you have the, that's the explore window where you see this listed and then in between the search results and the result tab. Now, if you would like to uh, expand or uh, look at the contents of an SMQ, then you can just click on the SMQ and uh, expand it. Like uh, before that, I would like to show you quickly a thing like whenever you click on an SMQ on the details section, uh, it provides the details of the SMQ and tells you whether it's a algorithmic SMQ. See, it's not an algorithmic SMQ, so it is uh, and, and it's obviously active. So uh, and you see the SMQ code over here to explore the contents just click on this plus sign below and you get to see uh, all the uh, PTs that are uh, listed under this SMQ like uh, you have these uh, PT uh, in blue but, uh, like acute kidney injury so whatever where you have this red uh, blue lettering PT which means they are all narrow scope and uh, wherever you see the red lettering, uh, they are PTs in broad scope. Recently, I remember answering one query in the help desk, like uh, where uh, one of our users wanted to know how should I identify the um, broad or narrow scope PT within the, the browser. So uh, this is how you could get to know. And you see, this is nephritic syndrome, which is a inactive PT within this SMQ. So when you are running this SMQ of acute renal failure, you must ensure that you remove this PT uh, with this version uh, while you are running a query. Now, the easiest way, uh, if you forget what the legends mean, you can just click on here, uh, the legends section here, and it tells you uh, what each uh, legends mean here. Like, for example, I just told you that was inactive. So PT uh, with a red lettering in the red box around, it means that it's a broad PT and inactive, okay?
uh, similarly you have the small letters like ptb ptc uh, so all of these means they are broad scope and if their active or inactive status are indicated by a a uh, box around them or uh, if you do not have a box it means they are active if you have a red box around them it means they are inactive okay so this uh, legend is very helpful okay now let us look at first one algorithmic SNQ that we spoke about like for example uh, acute pancreatitis so when I click on this acute pancreatitis uh, so you straight away you see it's an algorithm SMQ and it tells you what is the algorithm A or B and C. Uh, so uh, you have this SMQ notes if you scroll down below uh, you, you should actually also read the description when you're trying to uh, implement the SMQ and you, we also have this SMQ introductory guide uh, which tells you in details about each SMQ so I would encourage you to read them and also read about the description on the browser before uh, you start uh, running them on your data to be, to be aware of what you expect uh, what to expect when you run this SMQ okay when I explore uh, this further you see uh, you have these PTs uh, uh, broad scope and then you have this uh, na uh, sorry uh, narrow scope and then you have this broad scope like PTB uh, PTC which are like the broad scope categories like and the SMQ notes clearly says uh, a report is considered relevant for uh, further review if it includes a term from category A narrow, narrow scope so anything you re uh, retrieve from category A uh, it is possibly a case for review or if you uh, get any uh, matches from any of these uh, terms listed from category B any any one term from category B and at least one from category C uh, which are signs and symptoms so uh, like for example uh, you have these abdominal pain and then you have lipase increased or abnormal if you get any of these then you will get to uh, you you can consider uh, this algorithm uh, to be working successfully in uh, yielding a uh, few terms of your interest okay uh, now uh, if you want to see the history for example you have this hereditary uh, pancreatitis which is uh, inactive within this SMQ so you can also look at the history here uh, so if you see here uh, this was added in uh, version PT was added in version uh, 8.1 to this uh, acute pancreatitis and it was last modified in version uh, 24.1 okay and also this particular PT is also a part of another SMQ uh, fam uh, congenital family and genetic disorders where this PT is still I believe active okay so it is inactive PT uh, under narrow scope of this but active PT here okay uh, so that's with uh, the algorithm yeah one more thing I wanted to tell you is like to export an SMQ uh, you can always click on this SMQ uh, right click and you get this um, export SMQ so you may export the particular SMQ in a spreadsheet if you wish to uh, we also have this SMQ uh, spreadsheet which comes with each Medra uh, release inserts as well uh, which can be downloaded from our uh, download section and I also want you to sh uh, show you one uh, hierarchy so uh, like this hepatic disorder SMQ now if you click on this uh, hepatic disorder SMQ you will see there are sub SMQs uh, within and then uh, if I click on this drug related hepatic disorder comprehensive search uh, you will see there are sub sub SMQs we need them and then uh, like drug related hepatic disorder CVI events only uh, you have sub SMQs within them too and uh, the liver uh, neoplasms malignant SMQs uh, you have further levels here until you explode to get to see the uh, PTs which are under them so uh, you see there there's a fifth level over here so uh, this is how a hierarchical SMQ looks like even when you click you will see the details uh, displayed on the uh, description box there um, another thing uh, like don't expect all SMQs to have broad and narrow scope uh, as I mentioned before while uh, we were discussing the theory part 
so here, like you see lacrimal disorders, you do not see any narrow scope, sorry, uh, broad scope PTs here. So we only have narrow scope PT, which are indicated in uh, uh, blue lettering uh, PT in front of the SMQ. So the, when you look at the construct of the SMQ, you see that doesn't contain any uh, broad scope. Uh, similarly, with lack of efficacy and effect, so uh, not uh, a single uh, broad scope SMQ within them. So uh, these are, uh, so some SMQs might be very specific, okay, uh, without any broad scope SMQ. Uh, also, like uh, the last thing that I would like to show you is that uh, like with our uh, browsers uh, or the SOC view, you can also perform searches here. For example, if I type glaucoma, um, and I say search, so you will see uh, the search results are displayed in the windows just like this, so SOC view. So you have windows for LLT and uh, it would tell you how many LLTs are contained here, like 96 LLTs and one exact match, then the PTs, uh, 20 PTs you have, which contains this word uh, glaucoma. And, uh, you know, uh, an SMQ, obviously, it shows up which SMQ, it, uh, you know, if you have a SMQ with that matching word. If I remove the word glaucoma and just type coma also, uh, you will similar results because uh, in this case, it will search the keywords with coma and fetch you the results. So you see the uh, contained search has changed depending on uh, what feed I gave here. Okay, so Maya, that's all I had to uh, show about the browser. So let's get back to our, our presentation. And so we will talk about uh, using SMQs in the SMQ analysis tool and Medra browser. So we'll demonstrate a few features of the browser now. Uh, also, before that, we'll talk, discuss a bit, a uh, few things. Uh, I would like to stop here and uh, check if uh, there are any questions okay we do have one question um, here where can we find the spreadsheet with all SMQs and PTs included within the Medra version yeah um, I can just quickly show you but um, unfortunately I will not be downloading it uh, because uh, it would take a long time and that's not the scope of this uh, SM, sorry, uh, webinar today. So this is a download section over here. So you can, you need to enter your uh, credentials, uh, your Medra ID and password, and then, uh, you know, check this uh, thing. And then you will be able to log in where you will uh, reach our download section. Uh, there you would see all the dictionaries uh, which are available in zipped uh, format. So you need the unzipped password of each of the form, uh, work, corresponding dictionary that you are kind of uh, trying to download. So uh, if you've forgotten your uh, password, in that case, uh, unzipped password, then you can uh, ask your, uh, reach out to your company uh, point of contact uh, who is registered with us and they will be able to guide you. Uh, but if you are the registered POC, then you may use the self-service application, which is here to get the unzip password. And once you unzip it on your C drive, you will see the uh, file, uh, you know, exactly how it looks. I can quickly show you one which I have uh, downloaded for my desktop browser. So. So, uh, this is a spreadsheet that comes with the uh, browser. So, uh, I'm sorry, the download section. This is how the spreadsheet would look. Okay. So, uh, once you download it, uh, you will be able to see this. I hope uh, this is what you were asking. Uh, any other questions, Yuni? Uh, no, that was the only questions we had. Okay. Uh, so if you do not want to kind of, you know, use that, uh, even with the browser, you can uh, download it, sorry, export it. Uh, any other question, Yuni? Otherwise, we can proceed. Uh, we are just going on to that section. The question was asking, where do we use Medra? SMQs. Right. Uh, so, yeah, we are heading there soon. So, thank you for asking. Just have uh, some more patience. And if you have 
uh, any more questions after we do that presentation feel free to uh, ask because we are proceeding to that section of our presentation uh, very shortly uh, any other question other than this Yeni? oh yeah. <clears throat> Can we use multiple SMQs for a search? Yes, you can, depending on the question that you're exploring. Uh, so, uh, you know, in, in fact, uh, you do use it for signal detection, uh, especially when you have no idea what your drug is going to produce or even if your drug, you know, is producing something, you would want to know if there are new trends in your uh, drug. So uh, definitely you will use, uh, in fact, the entire set of SMQs available um, by the MSS. A lot of companies choose to do it on a daily basis to see uh, for new uh, trends. So yes, you may be able, you can use multiple SMQs in a particular uh, query list. Any anything else, Uni? These are very good questions. Thank you for asking. Uh, that's all we have for now. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, so let's uh, proceed uh, with the next section. Uh, so uh, uh, in this section, we will quickly dis uh, I'll quickly show you the SMQ analysis tool. Uh, so we understand that a lot of companies uh, do not have the you know they are very small companies that do not have the scope of hiring a programmer or you know uh, they may not be able to run the uh, SMQ. So I can just quickly demonstrate uh, the feature of the browser which you could use to run the SMQs on your data. Uh, so uh, before that, let me quickly introduce the browsers like we have the desktop, the mobile browser and the web based uh, and uh, the desktop needs to be downloaded. So all of these require your uh, Medra ID and password, obviously, and you would also uh, be able to search uh, with the uh, your uh, SOC and SMQ views and you can have support in all languages. And the search results can also be exported on your local uh, file system. Uh, that's with uh, the web based and the uh, desktop, but not with the mobile browser, unfortunately. Um, also, like uh, you can review the preview the upcoming supplemental changes like you have submitted a change request and it has been added or uh, any new changes that have been, ma been made to the uh, Medra version like uh, for example if you look at the supplemental view now you will be able to see what terms are going to get added in the Medra 26 version so uh, that's the purpose of the supplemental view and only available on the DEX uh, web-based browser uh, because we need an internet connection for that so uh, the desktop is mainly for working offline uh, you know so very useful uh, when you are having uh, facing internet issues and you want your work to be done Okay, and you have advanced search options and you can upload terms and run against SMQs. That's what we will demonstrate shortly. Uh, so uh, I'll also quickly explain to you the IT perspective of SMQs or how you could run your um, SMQ. So uh, like uh, like with all types of focused or customized searches, SMQs are also uh, basically stored queries uh, that help you to identify um, any cases of interest uh, in your database. So uh, uh, coding happens at the LLT level and most organizations, they store data as LLTs and uh, the SMQ ASCII files, uh, they include the PTs and LLTs. So simply load these files like, you know, uh, with the LLTs and PTs into your tool and run the queries to get your hits. Uh, so you may also choose to um, use other options available like the narrow uh, broad search depending on uh, what kind of query you are exploring or you use the algorithms which we discussed or hierarchy depending on um, that's again you know your uh, question that you're exploring will uh, help you to kind of understand what you're looking for and kind of modify your query accordingly now this is one practical uh, demonstration that i would do this is a data sets maybe you have and now you want to know like, you know, uh, how many uh, PTs have uh, our potential PTs of uh, hits for any of the SMQs that are available. Like uh, a few minutes ago, one of our colleagues asked that, uh, you know, can I run um, more than one SMQ in a database? That's exactly what we are going to do with this uh, particular uh, data set. I have this in my Excel uh, format, uh, so which I will be using to demonstrate, but we'll quickly go over a few slides before I do the demonstration. Uh, so uh, this slide shows the analysis tool here and uh, 
like uh, you have this option out here to refine your search type to broad narrow hierarchy a lot algorithm uh, depending on what kind of search you want and the results from broad search and this one shows uh, you an output so i'll just quickly uh, show you on the uh, this thing i'll use the desktop browser currently so uh, i'm on the smq uh, it doesn't matter which view you are uh, so uh, when you log into the browser here you have the smq analysis tool uh, so you click on this tool uh, it's the same with the web based browser also for the convenience sake i just used uh, the desktop because uh, sometimes they have huge files so uh, offline tool sometimes helps uh, and i choose my search here now from uh, change it to broad here broad scope will give you uh, uh, the narrow algorithm all the searches so broad scope is usually good to search if you do not know what to expect from your data uh, and then you have this import tab so uh, you must have data in a Excel spreadsheet and uh, they must contain at least one row ID, a term code and a case ID. So the term either you can use uh, the LLT term and the LLT code or a PT term or a PT code. So make sure if you're using the LLT term, you're uh, inputting the LLT code here. If you're using the PT term, you have the PT code. So and also check the version here. The data that you are importing must be in the same version that you are kind of you know trying to uh, search the smqs with otherwise you will have discrepant results as i mentioned uh, during my presentation earlier today and uh, this is the maximum uh, records you can uh, apply at one if you have bigger set of data then you might want to break it and then not more than you know uh, one lakh terms can be uploaded here and then uh, so the uh, data sets we were just demonstrating uh, so this is my uh, spreadsheet with the same data that i'm using now and i say i hit the next and uh, that's my output with the broader uh, smq and you see uh, the spreadsheet i have uh, lots of hits and uh, when i uh, i did not uh, apply any filters so uh, i used all the smqs 110 smqs that we currently have was run on this data sets and these are the hits so based on the pts uh, i had in my data uh, you know i found uh, hits here like you see here uh, especially like case number two uh, acute renal injury pt and this has hit on all the sub smqs of shock if you see here uh, the sub smqs are shown over here uh, so and they are all uh, sorry broad broad scope hits uh, so it's possible when you uh, not possible it is definitely when you run the narrow scope or smq uh, then these uh, you know uh, would disappear uh, so you will not see any hits on the shock smq anymore but only on the renal failure here so uh, that's the advantage of the broad scope so you you don't miss anything um, another thing i wanted to show here is uh, about uh, covid 19 yeah so uh, the covid 19 pneumonia you see have hit on uh, infective pneumonia opportunity infections as well as covid 19 so this pt is available in uh, more than one smq so just because you had uh, covid 19 doesn't mean it is like you know you will not have uh, you 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 might want to kind of you know look at uh, the opportunity in infections as well and to f uh, definitely see what's going on uh, you know it, it you might all you might know that uh, he is a good host and <laughs> uh, he is uh, you know expressing the symptoms so you would want to also look at uh, these two smqs uh, also uh, about acute respiratory distress syndrome you see uh, it did not hit on the covid 19 uh, smq that's because uh, this smq covid 19 was intended to be highly specific only for covid so uh, it did not come include uh, all possible clinical complications that could occur if the uh, if uh, for a in, in a COVID-19 uh, case so uh, that's why uh, 
it is not included here okay so uh, if you would want to look not miss out on adrs uh, then you would have to create a modified medra query uh, for the covid 19 smq to include this pt so that's what i wanted to tell you here okay um, and now i would also execute a algorithmic search so i change it from algorithm and i just say next uh, so i import again so uh, if you're not changing or you're not logging out then the uh, data same data sets you can always say next and it it runs uh, on the same data sets okay uh, so this was the algorithmic smqs and now my uh, query has hits only on a very limited uh, smqs which are algorithm rhythmic in nature so it only hits uh, i only cpt hits here and one thing is to be noted here is about the sle smq systemic lupus erythromatosis and you see uh, this case number 14 here uh, has hit on uh, uh, this smq and also so this uh, this is the only smq which has weight so you will see there are weight uh, in front of each pt here like for hemolysis 3 immuno autoimmune nephritis one and uh, double stranded uh, antibody hit has uh, hit on three uh, so uh, it is this is uh, this weightage is done based on the uh, disease activity and uh, that is uh, depending on the categories of uh, the weightage has been decided and uh, if you are aware of the cell uh, cellulidae and uh, uh, other uh, bilac scoring system of the sle uh, disease activity uh, you would know that uh, uh, for selena selidai score of more than 6 uh, it is certainly a case with the you know a lupus activity so there that would need of uh, you know more closer review so uh, hence uh, a score of 7 would definitely mean a case of sle uh, activity ongoing so this would definitely need review uh so uh, personally i found this uh, very helpful uh when uh, i was working as a medical data reviewer uh, in this therapeutic area so uh, this one was quite useful to us so uh, consider running the algorithmic smq uh, for uh, more focused uh, outputs you know like so uh, i would skip the next two slides because uh, that's exactly what i demonstrated so uh, and it's self explanatory here so let's do this quiz now so algorithm in an smq uh, what does it do like let's uh, see how attentive you have been so far an algorithm in an smq well uh, i see responses uh, coming uh, coming in and uh, 62% of you uh, say it intends to increase specificity and 38% of you uh, tell me it increases sensitivity uh, yes it increases uh, specificity uh, when you run a algorithm Uh, so uh, that's why uh, the algorithm is run on the broad scope terms uh, so that uh, you get more specific results uh, uh, because uh, you would not want a lot of noise uh, in your data especially when you have huge volume so next one here which measures will increase the uh, specificity of the smq output so more than one answer may be right so uh, you may want to choose whatever is the correct answer
for this que uh, quiz you may uh, you could choose more than one uh, option so so i see uh, responses so we had let's look at the options we we had options as making use of the hierarchical structure uh, using only the narrow scope pts of an smq making use an algorithm or removing pts if they reveal too many irrelevant cases uh, so in this case uh, to increase the specificity you could make use of the hierarchical structure you could include uh, narrow pts of an uh, smq consider only including narrow pts or even making use of an algorithm so first three were the right answer all right now next move to the next uh, so we have some time more some more time left so we can just quickly check with uni if any questions relevant to any uh, thing we demonstrated or the browser demonstration anything uh, any qu more questions uni yes mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, smq analysis output Mm -hmm. Acute kidney injury cases are matched to different SMQs. Can you please clarify on that? Yeah, uh, that's a very good question, and that's exactly what I was trying to demonstrate. Uh, so when we kind of uh, run the broad scope uh, query, you will see that uh, this acute inj kidney injury uh, hit on uh, the sub SMQs of shock as broad scope, and uh, with acute. Uh, kidney injury it was only as a narrow scope which means uh, this smq uh, contains uh, the pts both of these smq had this pt uh, one smq had it only as a broad scope uh, which was lot of noise and uh, under the uh, shock so when you kind of uh, refine your search and run only the narrow scope those uh, terms will disappear i can run a narrow scope and show you like you know uh, with same data like uh, here you come to the smq analysis and change it only to narrow search and i would import the data again so now we have only narrow scope smq so which is more specific so it was case number two and you see that the case number two has hit only on the acute uh, kidney injury and not on the uh, shock smq anymore I hope your question got answered now. Okay, any other question, Thierry? Uh, how many total SMQs as per the last ladies metro version? 110. Is that 110 in level one? One, level one. Yeah, yes. And um, can the number of PTs be changed with version update in particular SMQs? Yeah, of course, uh, it is possible that you get new PTs included or uh, some PTs might get excluded. Uh, like uh, I showed you one example, I think uh, when we were here, where a PT was probably removed. Uh, I don't remember it was acute um, renal, no, I think it was with acute pancreatitis. So, uh, uh, like this PT hereditary pancreatitis, if you look at the version history here, uh, it was in the narrow scope, but it was made inactive, which means this PT became inactive in version 24.1. So if you look at any of the uh, uh, dictionary between uh, 8.1 to uh, 24, uh, you will find this as an active PT, but this has been now removed and uh, not removed with inactive so when you are executing this query now with this version 25.1 or 24.1 onwards you would uh, want to remove this pt from your search so yeah it is possible that uh, you might have new inclusions or uh, some pts may become inactive uh, as we have version uh, control or updates any other uh, question uni no, that's all we had. Yeah, it's good to see. Uh, usually uh, the data analysis and SMQ uh, webinars go silent. So I'm glad that uh, we have a lot of questions today. Thank you for asking very good questions. OK, now let's look at some uh, SMQ applications. Uh, so 
uh, this one is uh, a slide shows you the practical uh, applications. So uh, during the drug development and pharmacovigilance phase, when especially with the clinical trials, when the safety profile uh, of the drug has not been completely established, so uh, you you may use the SMQs uh, because these were very developed to address the high granularity and the unique features of Medra so that you are able to maximize the likelihood that uh, all terms related to specific condition of interest are uh, kind of, you know, identified. So uh, in this situation, uh, you may want to run uh, all the SMQs on, uh, especially on the aggregate uh, data uh, when you do not know what to expect or what uh, uh, what has uh, uh, I mean uh, so especially with the uh, the new drugs you know you have the situation but sometimes uh, even with the new drugs you might know like uh, from your uh, previous uh, previous uh, phase tri uh, trials like the animal phase or even the uh, phase one trials or etc that you you probably will or even from the uh, reports of the class drug class effect you you expect a particular uh, adverse events to show up uh, in that case you might want to uh, use a particular uh, a, those focus searches can be done with the particular pts to look at uh, data if uh, whatever you've seen in the preclinical trials or even in the early uh, phases of your trial if it is holding good or not so uh, here uh, uh, in this case, when you are developing a data analysis plan, uh, especially for targeted uh, studies, then you might, you should consider uh, running narrow uh, terms of an SMQ so that uh, you can aggregate all events of your interest and uh, have less noise, just like we saw uh, when we ran the narrow scope for acute kid renal kidney injury and how it disappeared when we ran the, was available when we ran the broad scope and not available when we did the narrow. Um, in the post-marketing setting, uh, you may apply focus searches. Um, uh, here, an example could be a specific SMQ or uh, selection of SMQs may be used to retrieve uh, relevant cases of uh, subsequent uh, medical review. Uh, a good example could be like if you are a company uh, and uh, you're developing a, a new HIV product and uh, you know that uh, you're suspecting that uh, there could be emerging signals of acute pancreatitis in your uh, new product then in this case you may choose to run this SMQ of acute pancreatitis on a regular basis to look for signals uh, so uh, that's one thing or uh, you may also wish to use uh, narrow terms or more specific levels of the hierarchical SMQs uh, in your uh, data uh, so that uh, you you have minimum dilution of signals. Uh, you can also create a single case alerts uh, using SMQ. So uh, which is like, you know, automation of your uh, uh, data. So here what happens is in your database, you could do this automation, like uh, feed the SMQs. And whenever you have a new incoming case, uh, then that alert goes to your uh, reviewer for an urgent review. So that is also doable with SMQs and you may also want to use uh, SMQs for uh, aggregating relevant uh, cases on an ongoing uh, review of safety issues uh, especially with periodic safety reports so uh, when you are writing those uh, reports and you might want to run routinely the lack of efficacy uh, SMQ uh, so that you could uh, use in that uh, report and also on your aggregate data. Uh, so these are basically the applications of SMQ. Uh, I guess one of our colleagues had this question. I hope uh, the question is now answered. Uh, if you have any other uh, questions in that case, you may want to uh, ask, use the chat function and ask the question. Uh, if you have any more questions after this uh, two slides. Okay. Uh, now let's uh, look at what uh, EMA had to uh, say tell us so we code basically uh, because we want to retrieve and analyze the data so uh, the coding is generally uh, done at uh, the LLT level and the PT level is uh, used for um, analysis uh, because that's the medical concept uh, however we need to also have our toolbox handy uh, so that we are able to use the hierarchy uh, also uh, you know of Metra for retrieving data and also we are we should consider the single axial SOCs 
uh, and multi-axial SOCs for secondary SOC analysis as well. So make sure that uh, you have a complete comprehensive view. Uh, there is also use of customized searches and SMQs uh, while uh, looking for aggregating your data or analyzing your data. Also, you must be very careful that uh, you are able to achieve a, a right balance because um, if you are using too narrow search or focus search, then you may exclude uh, events of potential relevance. And with a too broad search, uh, it might be very difficult to identify a trend or a signal that may require uh, further analysis. So SMQs are a part of signal det detection strategy that are ut utilized uh, majorly by the regulators. So a colleague at EMA has slide, uh, shared this slide with us. And uh, EMA is going to really scrutinize your data in this way. So it's better that you do it first. Okay. Now this slide also shows another uh, uh, case where uh, SMQs were used to identify a safety issue. Uh, in this case, it was the SMQ hostility and aggression uh, that uh, resulted in the change of prescribing information from what was originally proposed in the new drug application. Now, if you look at the warnings and precautions uh, in the final uh, section uh, here of the prescribing uh, information, the falls were added. Uh, it was not there. So on your left hand side, you see what was proposed and uh, the right hand side, what was the final prescribing information that came out. Uh, so this false was added because there were higher risks of, uh, you know, vestibular disorders of 4.25 and even hearing and vestibular disorders of 4.08. So based on this, the false uh, got added to the uh, warnings and precautions. But then there is also one important piece uh, based on which uh, this boxed warning of serious psychiatric and behavioral reactions was added. That was because uh, this uh, had a hit on hostility and aggression uh, with a recurrence rate of 4.4. Now you might be wondering, uh, so why, why the boxed warning? Uh, that was because uh, this product uh, which was submitted uh, uh, was uh, for a toenail fungus. Now, uh, if... Uh, a product which is for toenail fungus and it uh, appears to have causing uh, appears to be causing uh, events with hostility and aggression then that's a serious matter so uh, that was the reason uh, and the uh, you know the adverse event uh, benefit risk ratio of the drug has really got uh, badly distorted because of the seriousness of uh, behavioral issues which it was causing so uh, the key point here is uh, that uh, this results were an actual, uh, you know, from an actual scenario that occurred at the FDA and the medical officer at the FDA uh, used the SMQs to evaluate the completeness of the final label. So the sponsors uh, may also wish to ad adopt the same strategy as well. Now let's discuss two, uh, of two scenarios uh, with SMQs. One second, I slide seems to have got stuck here. Um, okay, uh, so this is scenario one. So uh, your company has started developing a new drug and that's for uh, oncomyosis. Uh, and it is projected to take about eight years and uh, the cost of the production would be about $1.2 billion, a lot of money involved, uh, time and money both. And this is a picture of the therapeutic area or the indication that uh, uh, you're looking at. So this is, uh, so make sure that uh, you have this understanding what it means and how it looks. So that's a nail condition, uh, fungal infection of the nails. Now, uh, so you are a part of the uh, safety surveillance and uh, you decide uh, to run the SMQs uh, on a periodic basis uh, against your uh, data and you, uh, end up identifying five uh, cases of hemolytic anemia in your thousand patient exposures. Now, based on this, uh, you, you see uh, there is an unfavorable risk benefit ratio. And uh, considering that your drug was for toenail fungus, you suggest stopping uh, and the development of this project. So your management uh, reviews your recommendation and, uh, you know, follows it. So, uh, and you saved a lot of time, money and potential risks on the patients uh, and you, they decide to promote you. So 
you did a good job this another scenario now uh, so you are developing a fourth drug in a same, same therapeutic class and you you are aware your company is also aware that the other products in the same uh, therapeutic class were associated with high blood pressure and angioedema uh, however your target uh, disease is much more serious and given the seriousness of the target disease that was an acceptable risk that was uh, uh, so you continue to develop this product so during the development and even the early post marketing of your product uh, you run a these smqs right hypertension and angioedema regularly on your expanding safety data and as time passes by it becomes clear to you that your drug is not associated with either of these risks so your diligence has given patient a, a safer uh, alternative to the disease treatment so uh, yeah uh, congratulations you just made a world uh, this world a better place to be and you contributed significantly towards the quality of life and of uh, the involved subjects so good job there again now let's uh, move to the customized search uh, so metra allows for a variety of search options um, however uh there would be situations when uh you need to customize a search uh and uh, so uh, based on the question you might have to sometimes uh, do it so do not modify uh the term or uh, content or a structure of an smq uh, unless there is a compelling reason to do so because uh you know modifying it makes it a non standard uh, so if a smq is modified in any way it should be referred to as modified medra queries based on an smq and all modifications to the original smq should be uh, documented now if a med if modified medra query based on an smq is to be used on an ongoing basis uh, in that case the version updates and maintenance of the query are the responsibility of the organization that created it so smq lack of efficacy and uh, effect is often uh, modified uh, based on a particular uh, product so we are aware of this so uh, if you choose to do that you should uh, call it as modified metra query based on this smq okay uh, for customizing uh, queries uh, when you are creating these uh, consider the following points uh, uh, when you are uh, creating your customized metra uh, query for your uh, coded data so those who are responsible for uh, constructing or creating this customized queries should have medical knowledge uh, should also be aware of the uh, structure and characteristics of medra example the hierarchy the multiaxiality and the general content of the medra like you know uh, the groupings like how uh, the primary secondary soc locations hlt groupings hlgt groupings uh, and also understand the structure of uh, and the characteristics of data like how your organization is storing data so uh, they should have information about that too uh the specificity of the search should also be defined very very clearly um the first thing is like when when you're creating a query so the initial focus should be on the soc uh, which is directly related to the condition of interest uh, for example uh when you are creating a customized search on a renal condition then obviously you should start with the soc renal and urinary disorders uh while creating a query also look at uh, non multi axial uh, socs like investigations uh, surgical medical procedures and soc uh, social circumstances because uh, these are non multi axial and it's possible your data might be uh, you know uh, spread there which uh, you may ignore if not uh, you know if you forget to review those socs uh, also uh, consider reviewing uh, the socs which are not uh, system organ classes for example uh, general disorders and administrative side conditions and uh, injury poisoning and procedural complications and even the soc pregnancy preparium and uh, perinatal conditions because a lot of surprise elements might be lying there uh, also look at uh, the secondary soc links for your multi axial term because um, additional relevant uh, terms to you know include in your query might be found there also uh, consider including a uh, grouping of the terms like hlt hlgt where possible so uh, you may uh, 
uh, have you know uh, when you create the views by the SOC and the PT. So depending on where your clusters are, you might want to more uh, look at create more customized query to look around them too. Uh, so you can always refer to the Madra uh, data retrieval and presentation points to consider document uh, for uh, query construction tips. And uh, it takes really good effort and uh, time to create a good uh, customized query. So if you have created a, a good customized ad hoc query, uh, store it for future use, but do not forget to maintain that with each version changes, you know, and uh, a customized query that was useful to you uh, and you think it would be very useful for the other Madra users, then you might consider submitting it to the MSSO for a, a change request uh, as change request for a possible development of an SMQ. Okay. So to summarize in the webinar today, uh, we reviewed the data retrieval and presentation points to consider document. We uh, discussed the users and applications of SMQs. Uh, including uh, customizations. Uh, so uh, here are a few MSSO contact coordinates. That's the address of our website www.medra.org, uh, which is a very resourceful uh, place for lots of uh, information on Medra and uh, the training. Uh, and uh, if you wish, wish to you know get in touch with us, you can write to us directly at mssohelp at meta.org and we'll be very happy to help you. Uh, you we also have the online uh, chat option which you could uh, consider you know using. And obviously some other uh, important links are uh, of your interest have been displayed here. Uh, the next slide we have a few more URLs of useful resources. And uh, yeah, that's all I had for today. So uh, this is uh, towards the end of my formal presentation. And if you uh, wish to leave uh, yeah, the session now, then I would like to thank you for your kind attention. And I can now take a few more questions if they have been not resolved earlier. Uh, so before this, I would also like to make an announcement like, you know, we are having this uh, uh, user group meeting face-to-face uh, -face user group meeting in India, which is planned for Feb, uh, 23rd of Feb to be specific, uh, 2023. So if you look at this user group here, we have opened it for uh, registration. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is the registration page and we have it on uh, in the hotel, no hotel. And you can click on this uh, page to register. Uh, so uh, it's been uh, a long time, like, you know, after two years, we have planned a face to face in India. So I hope to see some of you uh, there. So if you were not aware of uh, this meeting, then you can consider uh, coming into bank uh, to attend this me uh, meeting uh, face to face this time. Uh, the agenda is not yet completely decided, so we have a few uh, topics, but then it is subject to change based on uh, uh, what the final agenda shapes like, but we have a tentative agenda in place, which has been uploaded there. Okay, now I get to Uni. Uni, uh, what kind of questions do we have uh, now? Uh, yes, um, so the question is asking one PT in different SMQs, like if neutropenia could be present in more than one SMQs, how it can out, uh, how it can weightage in signal detection? Uh, it's a very great question. I hope you are not talking about weightage in terms of uh, SMQs because uh, if, if that is your reference and we only have one SMQ, SLE as weightage, uh, weighted uh, SMQ that is based on disease activity. But if you're asking if uh, a PT is around, uh, you know, lying around in many SMQs, then obviously you need to do uh, pick up those. Like we saw with acute uh, renal injury. So uh, we had uh, that as a broad scope in uh, uh, the SMQ shock and it was a narrow scope in acute renal injury. So def definitely because it's a, a narrow scope is def certainly a case of uh, acute renal injury. Yeah, uh, so it, it matched a few signs of shock. So you would definitely want to look at the totality before you give any weightage. But uh, yeah, uh, the scope and uh, obviously like the other clinical signs and symptoms would be help, helpful in deciding uh, what kind of signals they are. I hope 
I answered your question. Uh, thank you. Um, next question. Can data output from FDA FAIRS public da dashboard be analyzed using Metra SMQ tool? Yes, you can. Uh, you can do that, uh, but yeah, you need to, uh, you can use our SMQ analysis tool, but you make sure that uh, the format is, uh, you might have to format the data sets, you know, and make sure that uh, you're not uploading more than a lakh uh, in, in our tool. So uh, otherwise you will not get an output. Uh, make sure you remove also uh, any kind of blank spaces. So you will have to basically format the spreadsheet and upload, yeah, it's possible. Okay, some thank you notes from the attendees and there's a follow-up question. What does weight mean in algorithm search of SMQ analysis? Yeah, so uh, this is basically the uh, about uh, SLE SMQ. So the SLE SMQ has, uh, it's the only SMQ which is a weighted SMQ like, uh, uh, and that's based on the disease activity score. So if you, I would uh, recommend that uh, of the, to the colleague who is asking this question to read about uh, a bit about SLE therapeutic area and also about uh, the Celidi and BILAC scoring. So to understand like how uh, based on different system organ classes, the scoring scale is decided. So this uh, uh, weightage is basically done on, uh, you know, based on that uh, tool and it has been assigned to particular uh, system you know particular uh, it's like for nephrology you have uh, this much score and this uh, for you know if it's a dermatology you have these many scores so uh, based on this uh, segregation the weightage is uh, given and uh, so uh, uh, Celera Celera is one of the disease activating measuring scales of SLE and uh, if you have a score of uh, six plus uh, on a Celera is generally a SLE activity going on with the uh, thing so this uh, basically, uh, when you run this algorithm SMQ based on the weight age, it becomes very easy to identify cases of SLE within your database, which would, which you would want to look for, you know, especially when you're uh, doing a review and you're looking for flares and uh, there are, uh, you do not have anything specifically noted, uh, but these uh, running this algorithm was very helpful to us, at least I can say from my past experience. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, no, I think that was the last question we received. Okay. So, uh, then I think uh, we can give uh, our users 13 minutes back. Right. Okay, thank you all for uh, your time today and asking great questions. Uh, uh, and I would look forward to meeting uh, some of you at least at the Indian user group meeting. Uh, and uh, whenever we start the phase to phase uh, trainings in India, we are working on towards that too. Uh, but it's it would probably take a little longer than uh, we expect because of the COVID, uh, uh, you know, the issues we see after that. So, uh, yeah, but uh, I definitely would love to see some of you at the phase to phase uh, use a group meeting in Feb 2023. So until then, uh, stay safe and have a great rest of your day ahead. And thank you, Uni, for your wonderful coordination today. Uh, we can close this webinar now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your attention today. Now I'm closing the webinar. <laughs>